And today on Commodities Market Update, we're talking fertilizer. Based on a survey by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, 80% of the land used in Nigeria is deficient in key elements such as nitrogen and phosphorus. And now to address this um, deficiency, the fertilizer industry in Nigeria has been dependent on import and local production of different types of fertilizer compounds to meet the domestic needs of farmers. However, it is believed that the fertilizer industry in Nigeria is a tightly controlled oligopoly. Well, joining me now to talk more about this is the head of treasury at Financial Derivatives Company, Juliet Adenuga. Thank you very much, Juliet, for joining us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chimeze. Thank you for having me. So with the imminent commissioning of the Dangote fertilizer plant this quarter, do you think that the massive increase in supply and shift in aggregate supply curve will result in a sharp drop in the price of fertilizer in Nigeria with a consequential impact on the general level of food prices? Thank you for having me. Bear in mind that fertilizer is an oligopolistic market a market that has few players as suppliers, it makes it possible for them to be able to take full control of the market. For the Dangote, um, um, I mean the Dangote fertilizer plant, it's been established that the plant has been built and completed. They're having skeletal production, you know, just running with their products in the market presently. But it's at full commissioning and at full capacity. It's going to be adding about 200% to the production in Nigeria already. We are producing about 1.5 million metric tons of fertilizers, while we need about 5 million metric tons. At this first stage, Dankote is planning to add a 3 million metric tons, which is very massive. This is definitely going to lead to a shift in the supply curve. It's not like a movement along the supply curve that is caused by price changes. This is major. That is going to call, it's brought about by a change in technological processes, in production process. So it's going to bring an influx. There'll be an increase in the production and the supply of fertilizer in the market. Mm -hmm. It will fundamentally lead to an, a, a reduction in the price of a unit, you know, a bag of fertilizer to farmers. Because when there is an increase in supply, when you, when you have an increase in supply, fundamentally the price of the product drops. And if the price of fertilizer drops, it's going to reduce the cost of production for farmers, which is very much needed for the price level to drop. So this is just like a chain. It's going to bring about influx in the market. It's going to bring, up, bring down the unit price of fertilizers. Cost of production is going to come down for farmers. And that will affect the price of food. It's going to bring about a reduction in the price of food. That is what is expected. Now, in the last 12 months, the price of MPK fertilizer has jumped by about 50% to about um, 9,000 naira per 50 kg bag. Now, this comes at a time when food inflation has soared to almost um, over uh, uh, about 23%. Now, since the demand for fertilizer is derived uh, demand from crop commodities, can you explain why the average price of this input is approximately two times the price increase of the general food basket? When you talk of derived demand in economics, the demand of a product brought about by the demand of some other intermediate or finished products like fertilizer, the demand for rice, yam beans, and other agricultural outputs that fertilizer aids in their production leads to the demand of fertilizer. So when people demand more of rice and all other food stuff, the demand for fertilizer is needed both in output and the quality of produce for farmers. So now with this on ground, we have an issue. Last year, there was a little support by the government for the provision of a particular blend of fertilizer. This year, that support is not there at all. Farmers are just finding their way on their own. But we have to also bring it to, into beer here. The fact that fertilizer, just like every other produce, has middlemen in the distribution channel. And we know what middlemen can do. In the case of fertilizer over the years, because of the support of government, middlemen have taken advantage and instead of making it available to local farmers, they prefer to export and make you know, foreign exchange earnings from there. This has caused a consistent you know, scarcity for fertilizer in the, you know, but this is supposed to come to an end because with the entrance of the you know, Dangote fertilizer now, mm. there's going to be no market for smugglers because mm. the people they are smuggling to, Dangote has access. He, also, he already has a distribution channel in mm. exporting you know, things like cement okay. to the region in African region. It's definitely, oh. you know, 
affects that too. All right, Juliet. Now, with the ratification of the AFCFTA by Nigeria and, of course, the global cost competitiveness of the Dangote fertilizer relative to other producers, what are the export process, prospects of Nigerian fertilizer at this time when the country is emphasizing on non-oil exports to diversify earnings? Okay, for you to export, there are two things that should come to play. Your price, how competitive is your price and then the markets. For this fertilizer in question, it's very favorable. It's oligopolistic, there are a few players. Secondly, because of the cutting edge technology, it's going to come out at a very, very reduced price. And it will be very difficult to meet this price. So in the international market, it's going to be very favorable. Now, it's also established, and it's a fact that Nigeria has signed the African continent free trade agreement and ratified it, and you know, it's part of it. So there's no barrier to trade. We are free to export as much as we can and foreign exchange and improve the, the Naira. Presently, it's established, or maybe I judge that there's going to be a kind of you know, retaining of up to $125 million in terms of import substitution from these exports. And about $625 million will also be retained from you know, the produce from these plants. So it's, it's a free ground and it's open and it's going to support the you know, export diversification policy being pursued by the government. A little bit diversification from oil. Let's also see what we can also benefit from this availability we have with the fertilizer from Dangote. All right, thank you very much, uh, Juliet, for your time on the program. We do appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.